Good morning again and uh, welcome to our morning devotion insight. This morning I want to share with you, keep firm, don't drift. Uh, keep firm, don't drift. And the scripture is found in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 and I read it from the Message Bible. It says it's crucial uh, that we keep a firm grip on what we have heard so that we don't drift off. What is the meaning of drift? You know, the drift just means to move along. Move along a line of least resistance. You know, we drift means move passively, aimlessly, or involuntarily into a certain situation or condition. You know, there was once a story told about two young men who were fishing uh, above a low dam on a river near their hometown. As they were concentrating on catching fish, they were unaware that they had drifted until they were not far from the water flowing over the dam. When they realised their situation, the current near the dam had become too powerful for them to keep their boat from going over. So below the dam, the water was dashing with strong force over great boulders and through crevices in the rocks. Caught by the swirling waters under the rocks, they never came to the surface. After days of relentless searching, the divers finally found one body and then two days or three days later, the other. So here you see that the danger of drifting is not limited just to physical realm. But the danger of drifting is also yeah, very important in our spiritual walk. You know, we find that we find warning against drifting in the Bible that tells us that, hey, be careful, uh, don't drift. So there are a few things that we want to know, uh, we things we should know about drifting. There are a few things here. Firstly, is that drifting requires no effort. You don't need to, you know, make special effort to drift. Just stopping to just row, you know, you stop to row, the boat will just continue to drift. So the same is true with our Christian life which is why we are told we must give more earnest heed. We must pay the most careful attention. Hebrews 2.1 says, uh, we must be careful. If not, we will just be drifting. And secondly, is that it is an unconscious process. It is possible to drift unaware. Just like that two, uh, the story of the two guys who were on the boat. They were unaware. They were so caught up with fishing. They thought it's okay, but their boat, their boat drifted. Uh, so in a boat or undercurrents are often unnoticeable uh, from the surface. So that's why it says the same is true in our spiritual realm. Many Christians or you know we, we, we have we slowly drift away. We don't only we couldn't even we, we thought we are okay, but we were slowly drifting. You know, and many churches have gradually also give, drifted into error. So that's why we need to be careful. We need to take heed. And then it, another thing is that we never drift upstream or against the tide. Faithfulness to the Lord is like what? You know, just rowing upstream. And so when, it, when, when we are trying to row upstream, we are trying to row upstream, it takes effort, so we are aware. We make time. We give. We give our uh, our time, our effort to row upstream. But when we drift, you know, it's hardly against upstream. One, it's all the way downstream. Huh? So you must constantly be remembering that when we drift, we are hardly against the tide. We are going what? Just going with the flow. So you and I must continue to grow. So the moment the moment you and I stop growing, we start to what? To drift backwards and downwards. Huh? So the next thing is that we should know about drifting is that the speed downstream increases. The dangers increase with the speed of the drift. When we can hear the noise of the waterfall, too late already, correct now. Mm? Or when we lose sight of the land and then we see that you know uh, the, the land is getting further and further and, 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 and there is no more help, we are already drifting too far. So as we move further and further from the Lord, we care less and less about what we do. That's very sad, isn't it? Huh? So it is dangerous also when we drift to others because a ship, a ship just drifting is a hazard to all other vessels at sea. You know, a ship that is just drifting, you know what? It becomes an obstruction. It becomes a hazard to other uh, vessels that are in the sea. 
And then that's why parents who are just drifting will soon lose golden opportunities to teach their children. So parents, we got to take heed. Parents, we got to tell ourselves, we got to grow. If not, our children also will just be, tidak apa also, will just say, it's okay. And everybody will just be drifting together. And also, many are tossed to and fro, carried by every wind of doctrine. So when we drift, we are not careful. So we say, ah, this also can, that also can. So we hear this, we hear that. We do not know how to discern because we have not been growing and we are just drifting. And then, sad to say that one of the things that um, drifting does is that it, what? it ends in shipwreck. A boat adrift will crash on the rocks or go over the falls. You know, for those who drift spiritually through their own or through their own neglect, there shall be no escape, what? Of a just shipwreck. You know, when we keep on moving on and keep on going on to, you know, just allow ourselves to be drift, 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 drift. And then so what happens? We will ultimately end in a shipwreck. That's what we do not want to see, isn't it? So the common signs of, dri- of, signs of drifting is that we are what? We are diminishing the, de- the desire to study God's Word uh, and to pray. The Bible is unique book. Bible is the, the book of where the Lord speaks to us. is God's Word. But it is a source of information and a source of spiritual growing for us. But when we lose desire for God's Word, we are drifting. Mm. And then praying is a wonderful blessing, an avenue to communicate with God. So when Christian prays less and less and less and less, what happens? He is drifting more and more away from God. So, the other sign is that diminishing desire to be with God's people. You know, when you don't desire to meet up and say, no lah, you know, uh, no, no more church for me, no. And then especially now, with all the, you know, uh, we are going online and uh, we can't meet so much. And so when there is an opportunity for physical service, then let's try, huh, friends, let's try to say, yes, I want to meet up. Or you say, oh, it's okay, like, I prefer to stay at home, you know, because you know what, I'm used to it. And so we drift. Somehow, we, we tell ourselves, I prefer this kind, it's safer, it's better mode. And I know some, some of us, we are elderly, some of us, we have children, understood. Uh, to be safe at home. But some of us who are fit, who are well, who are young, who are healthy, we should say, you know, God, I really want to come back. A lot of things that are in, in the church, like worship, like praise, you know, like uh, just listening to God's word, these are not downloadable. You cannot just watch it and say, okay, I got it. But when we come live, uh, when we do physical service, we want to meet together, isn't it? So, and then there is also the diminishing desire to share the gospel. We do not want to share the gospel anymore. No more passion uh, for the loss anymore. That is a sign. Uh, that is a sign that we are drifting. And then the increasing thrill over things of the world. We, we want to have more of the things of the world. We felt we find thrill, you know, for, for uh, worldly pleasures. We try we find thrill to be just be lovers of pleasure. And that will be a sign that we are drifting. Huh? So, how to remedy? How to, you know, we know, the, we, we know the dangers, we know the signs, we know etc. But how to remedy uh, against drifting? We keep rowing. Keep rowing. Huh? Keep rowing. You see a boat and then you see, you tell yourself, if this person in the boat and in, in order not to keep it, keep it just drifting, drifting, drifting to nowhere and maybe causing a shipwreck, is to keep going. Keep rowing. Huh? So that's why in 2 Peter 1, say, 1, 1 10 says, Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For, for if you do these things, you shall never fall. So we keep on growing. We keep on rowing. We keep on persevering. And then watch out for the undercurrents. We must always be on the guard for the undercurrent of what? Of temptation. For we have a fleshly nature which wage war against our soul. We've got to be very vigilant. Huh? And we expect to go against the tide. There are many tides to sweep us away. Maybe popularity, maybe peer pressure, you know, maybe the praise of others, maybe skepticism, humanism, modernism, the new norm. So many things are just going to sweep us away. You know, don't, don't, no, need, no need church anymore, no need God anymore. Huh? And then with the neglect, 
uh, neglect of uh, uh, indifference, you know, if you are offended, then we say no need to come back to church anymore, you know, and there are so many things that will just to go against us, go against us. So that's why we need to tell ourselves if you and I this morning are having symptoms, are having signs that, you know, God, I think like I'm drifting. So my uh, encouragement is that why don't we tell ourselves, God, I really, really want to tell myself, I need to keep firm, don't drift. Huh? Keep firm, don't drift, stay in the Lord. Uh, Galatians 5.1 says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened by a yoke of slavery. Huh? Don't want to be burdened again. Don't want to be kept in a place where I can't grow. And eventually, I'm just going to drift and maybe I might even have a shipwreck. So my friends, brothers and sisters, let us don't drift and keep firm. Amen. God bless you.